Hi guys, this is Grandmaster Leon Arushidze and today we are going to have another video lesson. And today's subject, today's theme is um, peace coordination and maneuvering. So in the beginning I will just explain quickly what I mean when I'm talking about this subject. Um, for example, in the beginning of our chess careers, uh, our first coach, first teacher definitely told us to all that um, we have to develop the pieces, we have to take care about the position of our king to ensure that it will be placed on the safe location, and we have to fight for the center, right? But I would pay a little bit um, more attention about the to, to the subject of development, because this is not just like, uh, okay, I place knight on f3, bishop somewhere on b5, made a castle, and the job is done. Uh, I want to say that the development, peace development, it's a permanent process. Um, let's say it's very similar to the um, football game or, for example, the basketball game, right? Um, the players should have good connection between each other. They should have good chemistry, understanding of each other, uh, feeling of each other. Uh, they have to attack together and defend together, right? So it's, all, it's the same about the chess game. Uh, pieces are our chess players on the board and we have to take care uh, and make sure that they will be useful. They all will be involved in the chess game. Then we will have a great chemistry between our chess pieces, chess players and uh, with, with such a good position it's very difficult to lose a game. Normally uh, people are winning if um, all our pieces are active at the board. For example um, Robert Fischer, uh, many grandmasters say that he never had a bad pieces in, in his position or if he had some of them he just um, was trying to exchange it or improve its position. So it's a really very important subject, we have to remember about it, even if it's an end game, doesn't matter, always taking care about the location of our pieces and activity. So now let's um, uh, take a look at this subject with the practical examples. Uh, we see the position when white has a clear space advantage. Also, there are a pair of bishops at the board. Mm, maybe, maybe position is a little bit closed for the pair of bishops, but still it's a very positive subject, I would say. Uh, matter is, um, where white should attack? Uh, what should we plan here? Obviously, this pawn on h4 is killing my active play on the king side, so I would switch to the queen side play. For example, at any moment, I really can, uh, you know, immediately open the c file, and if I will double the rooks there, it could be an interesting idea. Also, we have to pay attention to h4 even uh, uh, even more because this pawn. Yes, it's fixing my king side, but it could be also some kind of weakness, right? Because pawn g6 cannot protect pawn h4, so it only protected with the pieces. However, okay, it looks like that there are a lot of pieces are protecting this pawn. Uh, okay, now we understood that probably our play is connected with the queen side. Maybe pawn h4 is weak, potentially. But now let's take, take a look at, at um, our own pieces, our own chess players, right? at the board. Queen. I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm a little bit uh, worried about our queen because uh, it's somehow stuck there on f3 and I don't see too much prospect there for the queen. What about the knight? Knight is protecting some pawns like d4, f4. Okay, maybe d4 potentially could be under the pressure, f4 not too much. Uh, and if we will ask ourselves, if, is, is there any active possibilities for the knight? I really don't see it. So knight is probably is also a little bit misplaced. I like more bishop f2, because it's protecting pawn d4 and potentially pressuring also this weakness. And also I like bishop d3, because, okay, uh, there's no better diagonal or better place so far at the board and potentially bishop can be exchanged um, for this active knight if necessary and weaken the protection of the pawn h4 right so everything is connected so i don't have any uh, problems with my bishops 
Uh, but my queen and the knight, it's a little bit strange, you know, especially queen that is just doing nothing. So, question is now, when we realized what's wrong with our position, uh, what to do with them? We have to try to find better places, better locations for the knight, for the queen to improve the chemistry and the harmony of our pieces and generally improve the power of our position. It's very important, maneuvering subject. So, uh, probably knight if I look at the position, should stand on f3 instead of white queen. Why? Because, okay, knight still fulfills the same job of protecting d4 pawn that can be useful, and at the same time, knight has an object to pressure. That's the huge and very positive point. So the, the most natural, most powerful activity is not just beautiful piece in the center of the board, but when this piece has a target to attack. So that's the great, great position for the knight. Uh, so, now the solution is clear, right? Knight goes to g1, queen will have a possibility to go back somewhere here, and knight goes to f3. So, uh, knight becomes active, and queen is not stacked there on the king side. Uh, now black has a problem, because also together with this um, weak pawn h4, uh, he doesn't know what to do with the king, because the castle doesn't look so good. Rook will leave the h h8 square, will lose the control over h4 pawn. Probably he will leave this king here. Maybe king f8, king g7 could be played to keep the rook on h8. Uh, in the game, black just played queen b6, trying somehow to improve the pressure over d4 pawn. Uh, so we don't have yet knight f3, and it means that we have to play c5. But it's not good, no, not bad, because uh, my pawn chain even more now guarantees my space advantage and makes passive opponent's pieces, right? So after queen b7, queen e2, a5, knight f3, white achieved probably the most optimal location of the pieces. Knight f8. I don't know, for me it's a little bit uh, hard to explain now the opponent's maneuvers. Probably black is still suffering because of uh, uh, the, the passive position, no plans, and he's making some you know, some general moves there. And now, okay, we could we could already start attacking this pawn, right? Queen e1 and one, two, three pieces are attacking this h4 pawn, and if necessary, we can exchange bishop for the knight. So suddenly, pawn h4 is in the trouble. Uh, okay, maybe many players would play queen e1 here, but uh, the experienced player never hurries. Uh, experienced player always tries to do the, the, the task in a most comfortable way, right? Uh, is black going to protect pawn h4? No. So let's play first rook a1. It's a very powerful move, because Wright realizes that his uh, potential possibilities his attacking possibilities are also connected with a3 move because he will destroy this pawn before and as we see our pawn chain disconnects that pawn that that real, little pawn Iceland of a4 before pawns from the rest of the black black, black sorry black pawn chain right so th th this could be a problem so rook a1 rook b1 why to play queen e1 uh, closing the rook on f1 while we can first put the rook on b1 and then play queen e1. So this is the 100% harmony. So how wide get this decisive advantage? He actually did not create some terrific attack over the black king, no. He just looked at the position and tried to find the most uh, optimal location for his pieces, creating um, pressure over the targets. Now, pawn h4 is falling probably, we are exploring the q side also, pawn b4 is also in a huge trouble, white has decisive advantage. So, very nice play, very nice game won by white, thanks to improving the piece coordination. Now, let's um, take a look at the another position. Uh, then remember, this is uh, Bobby Fischer is playing with white, and definitely white has a um, huge positional advantage because uh, it's a terrible pawn chain, pawn structure, very weak. Our knights are dominating, pressuring all the objects that are possible to pressure. 
I just like Rook 2. Controlling only open file and also makes uh, busy with a very uh, boring work. His uh, th this Rook C8 in the, for this defensive task. So just a great position. So all the moves could be good now here for White. But Fisher finds um, the most powerful way to increase the pressure over the opponent's position and immediately gets decisive advantage. What did he do? He looked at the position and realized that yes, okay, the knights are great, rook is great. Uh, probably the only piece that is also stands acceptable but doesn't attack anything is bishop b3. So, what is the idea of peace development, maneuvering, peace coordination? We always permanently need to keep finding better places for our pieces and always improving the worst piece that we have at the board. So, the most passive piece is the bishop. Could we find the target for the pressuring? Yes, definitely. Bishop c1. This is a little bit surprising move going back, but the idea is that bishop is going to b2. Now, He's increasing the pressure over e5, f4 is unstoppable, and white gains material advantage. So, okay, I believe here white could play also something like king e2, king d2, and many other useful moves. But, game ends after this maneuver, placing pieces on the more active positions and improving the pressure, right? Okay, let's take a look at the another game. Here also white has a space advantage. We have a typical dragon here. Uh, but okay, space advantage doesn't mean that we already won the game, right? So we have to keep improving our location, location of our pieces and creating some threats. So what white could do here? Maybe there is a open file that deserves some attention, but okay, opponent also could fight for that file. For example, if you play uh, rook a1, he could play something like uh, bishop c6, exchange this knight, then rook a8. Uh, okay, it's just uh, it doesn't lead to something clear, so I'm not very happy with this rook a1 move. Um, our pawn structure indicates about the attack on the king side too and the space advantage on the king side so it's logical if we will find the way to improve our pressure uh, on this flank what we could do maybe queen d2 with idea of bishop h6 exchange the bishop and weaken the king okay this could be a really possible idea but still uh, we, we don't create some powerful threats, right? We need more harmony, better coordination and concentration of the pieces on the king side to create some serious uh, threats. So, okay, the answer is queen has to go to f2 and then queen goes to h2. Now queen, together with this bishop and the knight, starts to, to, to coordinating very well. And after this maneuver, white also will use the power of the rook. Rook helps to the queen and all white pieces are start working together. And then threats are really unstoppable. This is what happened in the game. Queen f2 and black is in real trouble. Bishop h6, uh, c6, queen h4. Bishop takes d5, pawn takes d5. And here, as I remember, black played just a rook e8. Uh, okay, he could try something like b5 too, but it doesn't open the position. White calmly continues the same maneuver of placing rook on h3. Pawn takes e4, pawn takes e4. Maybe queen b6, rook h3. Now already, when oh, three pieces are starting to coordinate well, it's already a serious problem. So h5 looks like that only um, defense from the checkmate. And here this is the only moment when... Why should not hurry? Because if we will take immediately on g6 with the bishop, Blake will get some cont play, serious cont play after the uh, knight g4 jump, and there are problems with the f2's check. So we have to play rook g3. Very strong move. Then maybe 
832 there's no need to rush and this pawn and generally king's position will fall of course now knight g4 doesn't work because rook takes g4 bishop takes g6 and game is over so we are eliminate, eliminating the, the only attacking piece from the black side this uh, nasty knight on g4 so let's go back uh, in the game black played rook e8 white continues the same rook f3 knight e7 rook c1 um, I agree rook h3 also was possible but uh, there is no need to rush again and again White control situation, black doesn't have a threat, so white tries to concentrate all his resources. And it one more time shows our subject, right? Increase the good chemistry between your players. Harmony. So, bishop f6, rook h3, knight f8, pawn takes g6, pawn takes g6. And now, as all white pieces are already pressuring the poor black king, um, situation is ready for some tactical decisions. Pawn takes g6. Taking on f6 with the rook. And it's a very beautiful ending of this game. Can you find the checkmate in uh, three moves here? Right. It's a rook h7. And bishop h6 checkmate. Okay. Let's go for the another subject, for another position. Uh, well, white is better, I definitely believe in this. We have a protected pass pawn. Three against two on the queen side. And we control the D file, right? However, it, maybe it will not last for no long, for, because black can play rook D8 and try to exchange um, major pieces, maybe the rooks and uh, the the, the importance of control of the open D file um, will be probably just eliminated. Uh, so, what could white improve in this position? Let's take a look at the pieces, right? Um, okay, queen and the rook, they are standing on the optimal position. Knight is three. Where this knight could go? So far, I don't see any good protected square for the knight. So it looks like maybe it is the best, be, be, best square here, uh, limiting the opponent knight's jumps, right? What about the bishop? Bishop is doing nothing here. Bishop is attacking the pawn that is protected with another pawn, so it's not a real pressure. So potentially we could improve the bishop. Uh, in the game... White played here a4, but it's a little bit early to start to start to destroy the queen uh, queen side because after pawn takes, bishop takes, and a5, suddenly black is the player who destroys this strong pawn chain and equalizes it easily. So let's go back to this position. We remember that bishop is possible to improve. The question is where where to go with this bishop, right? Because this diagonal is the same that this one. I would not say that there is a huge pressure from c2 square, right? But then I realize, then we realize, of course, then bishop should go on d1. And suddenly, bishop trans transposes to this f3 square and every time starts to create threats connected with the entrance on b7 and targeting those pawns on the queen side. Now, also, black has some problems connected with the rook d8, because um, after rook d8, if we take and he exchanges the queens, bishop f3, there is a real problem now with these pawns. So, uh, with the bishop on b3 out of the play, black could try to eliminate the pieces that are uh, dominating on the d-file and nothing would happen. But after the correct plan, improving the position of the pieces and increasing the chemistry of our players, it's impossible now and we get additional threats. Team works always together. All the pieces should do something. Now, next position. Sometimes 
uh, the peace improvement is connected with a tactical idea. So it's not about always I need to find some maneuver to bring one piece from the wrong square to the good square. Sometimes it's simply impossible and we have to use the tactical trick. Uh, Black has ugly pawn structure, of course, on the queen side, but the problem is that this knight g5 potentially will be a little bit passive piece after h3, h6 because it should go on h3, then it should go to f2, and things are really going wrong for it. So having such a passive knight, we cannot use any any points of this uh, destroyed pawn structure on the queen side. For example, if white simply exchange the bishop or oops uh, let's say first uh, he tries to double the rooks what happens uh, okay h6 knight h3 it's possible even to exchange the bishops and and what's from it there's no uh, possible squares where rook could enter there bishop just goes to e6 and black tries to pressure here by a4 so maybe it's even slightly better position for black due to terrible knight on h3 so it's it's the moment of truth or now or never we have to do something with this knight and the little tactical trick help us to bring this um, little knight on g5 to the probably most powerful square in this position knight f3 sometimes tactic helps the strategy so uh, now it's impossible to avoid entrance of the knight on e, knight on e5 square. It's impossible to take on f3 because of simple queen takes, rook takes, rook d8, and checkmate. Okay, so yes, it it looked like really dream for the knight to get somehow on e5 on such a beautiful protected square in the center, but tactic helped. 